A tulku Tibetan, Wiley, Sprolska, Zypy, Zugu, also tulku, trulku, is a reincarnate custodian of a specific lineage of teachings in Tibetan Buddhism who is given empowerments and trained from a young age by students of his or her predecessor. High-profile examples of tulkus include the Dalai Lamas, the Panchen Lamas, the Samdang Dorje Phagmos, the Karmapas, Kyances, and the Kongtrols. Nomenclature and etymology The word, or sprul modern Lhasa Tibetan L was a verb in Old Tibetan literature and was used to describe the Bt Sanpo emperor, Tnz taking a human form on earth. So the sprul idea of taking a corporeal form is a local religious idea alien to Indian Buddhism and other forms of Buddhism e.g. Theravadan or Zen. Over time, indigenous religious ideas became assimilated by the new Buddhism, e.g. Sproul became part of a compound noun, Sproul.sku, incarnation body, or Tulku, and Btsan, the term for the imperial ruler of the Tibetan Empire, became a kind of mountain deity. The term Tulku became associated with the translation of the Sanskrit philosophical term Nirmanakaya. According to the philosophical system of Trikaya or three bodies of Buddha, Nirmanakaya is the Buddha's body in the sense of the body mind. Sanskrit, Namarupa. Thus, the person of Siddhartha Gautama, the historical Buddha, is an example of Nirmanakaya. In the context of Tibetan Buddhism, tulku means the corporeal existence of enlightened Buddhist masters in general. In addition to Tibetans and related peoples, Tibetan Buddhism is a traditional religion of the Mongols and their relatives. The Mongolian word for a tulku is Kubal Gamaan, though such persons may also be called by the honorific title Kutu Gama Tu Tib, Fags Pa and Skt, Arya or Superior, not to be confused with the historic figure, Fags Pa Lama or the script attributed to him, Fags Pa script, or Hutakt in the standard Kalka dialect. According to the Light of Fearless Indestructible Wisdom by Kenpo Sewing Dongyul, the term tulku designates one who is noble or selfless according to Buddha's usage and used in Buddhist texts to denote a highly achieved being who has attained the first bhumi, a level of attainment which is truly egoless, or higher." The Chinese word for tulku is huofo, huofu which literally means, "...living Buddha", and is sometimes used to mean tulku, although the Dalai Lama has said that this is a mistranslation, as a tulku isn't necessarily a realized being. Meaning of tulku Any Vajrayana practitioner can be reborn as a tulku, if they fail to reach Buddhahood or a pure land in the bardo of dying, bardo of dharmata or bardo of becoming. Valentine summarizes the shift in meaning of the word tulku, this term that was originally used to describe the Buddha as a magical emanation of enlightenment, is best translated as incarnation or Steadfast incarnation, when used in the context of the tulku system to describe patriarchs that reliably return to human form. Topic: <laughs> Finding a successor. Pamela Logan outlines a general approach for finding a successor. When an old tulku dies, a committee of senior lamas convenes to find the young reincarnation. The group may employ a number of methods in their search. First, they will probably look for a letter left behind by the departed tulku indicating where he intends to be born again. They will ask the close friends of the departed to recall everything he said during his last days, in case he may have given hints. Often, an oracle is consulted. Sometimes a prominent lama has a dream that reveals details of the child's house, parents, or of geographical features near his home. Sometimes heaven presents a sign, perhaps a rainbow, leading the search party to the child. Sometimes the search process will include testing the candidate. One. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Training. Logan describes the training a tulku undergoes from a young age. He is brought up inside a monastery under the direction of a head tutor and a number of other teachers or servants. He must study hard and adhere to a strict regimen. He has few if any toys or playmates, and is rarely allowed outside. Early on, he learns to receive important visitors, take part in complicated rituals, and give blessings to followers and pilgrims. Sometimes one or both parents are allowed to live near the young tulku. 
Older brothers are sometimes inducted into the monastery as monk companions for the Holy Child. Yet his elderly tutors are the most influential people in his life, and they become his de facto parents. The academic atmosphere is balanced by unconditional love. Countering the bleak academic regimen is an atmosphere of overwhelming, unconditional love. During the tulkus every waking moment, monks, family members, and odd, adoring visitors, shower the youth with love. If you visit a child tulku, you will probably notice that his quarters are pervaded by a wonderful glow. Everyone beams at the tulku. The tulku beams back. If he asks for something, he is given it immediately, and if he errs, he is corrected just as immediately. Western visitors to the young 14th Dalai Lama commented on the extraordinary steadiness of his gaze, even when quite young, the boys have remarkable poise, they sit calmly without fidgeting, even through ceremonies that may last all day. History The tulku system of preserving dharma lineages did not operate in India. The first tulku line of Tibet is the Karmapas. After the first Karmapa died in 1193, a lama had recurrent visions of a particular child as his rebirth. This child born ca. 1205 was recognized as the second Karmapa, thus beginning the Tibetan tulku tradition. Tulku lineages Some examples Dodrupchen tulkus are the main custodians of Longchen Nyingthig. Dujom tulkus are the main custodians of Dujom Tursar. Chokaling tulkus are the main custodians of Chokaling Tursar. Khyentse tulkus are the main custodians of Jamyang Khyentse Wangpo. Kongtrol tulkus are the main custodians of the Jamgon Kongtrol. Samding Dorje Pagmo Tulkus are the highest female incarnation lineage in Tibet. Tibetologist Francoise Pomeret estimates there are presently approximately 500 Tulku lineages found across Tibet, Bhutan, northern India, Nepal, Mongolia, and the southwest provinces of China. Criticism <coughs> 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 In the 2009 documentary film Tulku, Zongsar Jamyang Khyentse Rinpoche states the Tulku system may not work in present day. And now, I personally think that to hold that culture, institutionalized Tulku. That culture is dying, it's not going to work anymore. And even if it. And if it doesn't work, I think it's almost for the better because this Tulku, it's going to. If the Tibetans are not careful, this Tulku system is going to ruin Buddhism. At the end of the day Buddhism is more important than Tulku system, who cares about Tulku and what happens to them. Documentaries My Reincarnation Tulku Unmistaken Child See also Rebirth Buddhist Incarnation Reincarnation application Avatar Bodhi Kumari — Nepalese Hindu goddess incarnation, similar determination process. Namarupa References Notes Further reading Ray, Reginald A. 1986, "'Some Aspects of the Tulku Tradition in Tibet", in the Tibet Journal 11 35–69 Tulku, Thondup Incarnation, The History and Mysticism of the Tulku Tradition of Tibet Boston. Shambhala Publications External links Reincarnate Lamas, Tulkus and Rinpoches, section from Berzin, Alexander. 2000 The Traditional Meaning of a Spiritual Teacher Tulkus, Incarnate Lamas of Tibet, an interview with His Holiness Sakya Trizin, an excerpt from Testimonies of Tibetan Tulkus, a research among reincarnate Buddhist masters in exile by Daniel Barlocker, Opuscula Tibetana, Rikon Zurich, August 1982. 
Tulkus, Incarnate Lamas of Tibet II Interview with Sakya Gangma Dagchen Rinpoche, excerpted from Testimonies of Tibetan Tulkus, a research among reincarnate Buddhist masters in exile by Daniel Barlocker, Opuscula Tibetana, Rikon Zurich, August 1982. Interview translator, Cyrus Stearns. Tulkus, Masters of Reincarnation, Focus article at Wisdombooks.com.